If you remember last week, I talked about Skydio and their new firmware update, which gave us keyframe abilities. This week, I want to compare that to DJI's waypoints and see how they stack up. So stick around, I'll give you my thoughts. So I'm going to do this in two parts today. The first part I'm going to do is pre-planning my flight before I go out to the park. And the second one, I'm going to set waypoints once I get to the park. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because if you remember from last video, I did a drone park that we have here in Sefner, Florida. This is pretty new and it doesn't appear on the maps yet. So to pre-plan it, I'm kind of guessing at locations. Whereas once I get out there, I'll be able to determine exactly where I want to fly. So I'll give you both options on that. So first thing I need to do is turn the drone on. So I'm going to turn my controller on first. Next, I'll turn on the drone. And wait for the software to load. So everything's loaded up. I'm now going to go to my waypoint function. I go over here to my controller icon, click on that, come over to waypoints on the right hand side of the screen and click on that. Task recovery, I'm going to say OK on that previous one I did. It's moved me up to the park. Now I did this a little earlier just to get to just to trial it and I'll go back through it again with you. So I'm going to expand this a little bit and you can see there's nothing going on here. This is basically a bare field and they've certainly improved that for our drone racing park out there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trash all these key points. Say yes. Now we're going to start from scratch. So now I kind of have to guess where I want to go. And I know relatively I want my first waypoint to be down here somewhere. And you see at the top, that blue lighted icon, that's for adding key points. So if I tap on the screen, I add my first key point there. See, it's set for this direction at 164 feet altitude. Let's say I come out here from my second key point, maybe here from my third key point, here from my fourth key point, and back up here from my fifth key point. Now that's all relative. I don't have any idea where the gates are like I did last week. So we're starting from scratch on this. But the one thing that it does allow you to do, which I think is pretty cool, is you can adjust everything you want here. If I tap on this first keyframe there, I'm sorry, first waypoint keyframe of Skydio, the, the number enlarges. If I scroll down on it, I can reduce the altitude, let's say to something around 25 feet or 30 feet, somewhere in there, around 30 feet. So now it's 30 feet at that point. Up here, I can say waypoints okay. Click on that. Can move to my second waypoint. I can change that down to something more ridiculous, reasonable, say 36 feet, tap OK, and so on. Next, I'll we'll do the same thing. A little lower, hit OK. Fourth one, same thing. Crank that down to about 60 feet, say OK. And these are all just picking them out of the air right now. You can decide what you want on those. Do the same thing on this one here. Go down to 29 feet, say OK, and there I go. Now, the other thing I can do on this is I can actually change the direction of the camera if I want. And I cut, ended up with another waypoint over here I didn't want. So I'm going to click on that. That was an oops. And hit trash on that. Now I'm back to my five sites. There's, <laughs> you got to be careful on touching the screen on this thing sometimes. So the, I have the ability to change the direction of these cameras, the speed, all those sorts of parameters, much more so than I do have in the Skydio keyframe application. But you've also got the option under settings, if we go here, and let's see here. I can put a point of interest in there. If I wanted a point of interest and click on that and hit the center of the screen there, and then say, let's see, here we go, click on that, and say link waypoints down here at the bottom right. If I click on that 
and do all, oops, do all over here on the very left. Look at that. It rotated all the cameras to point towards that point of interest. So that's pretty cool there. So I could leave that alone like that if I wanted. So I'm going to do that. The other thing you can do, though, is you can adjust the flight pattern and call it either on a polyline or an arc. Now, if you set the arc, that means it's going to do kind of a smooth curve. And if you remember last video, the Skydio did a nice smooth turn through all those keyframes to make a nice cinematic kind of shot. If you do polyline, it's going to be straight from point to point. Arc is going to be kind of, well, what you, what you see is an arc. The problem with arc is you can't adjust the camera angles during arc. So that's kind of a downside. So I would say if you're doing construction management or you're doing periodic uh, flyovers of a building or some sort of construction site, this might be a better option. But if you're doing something more cinematic, I think the keyframe option in Skydio might be better. So here we go. We're all set on this one. I'm going to come up here to the save icon and save that particular task there. So now that when I get to the field, I can load this thing up. We can fly it and see what happens. So once we get to the park, we'll fly this one. Then I'll convert to a manual one there where we fly it based on the gates that I see out there and try to replicate what we did last week. So we'll move on to the park and continue from there. Okay, you've seen what I did in the studio. Now we're back at the park. But I've got to tell you, this is my third day back at the park because we've had issues with the drone, issues with the software, issues with the app. And we're going to try to work through those today. So we've got the drone hooked up. We're ready to go. I checked my aircraft status. Everything seems to be fine. Click that off. You can see in the upper left, I've got ready to go GPS, big green line. I'm all set on that. You look at the number of satellites. I got enough satellites. All the sensors except the side are working, which is normal. All the telemetry looks really good right there. If I go to the top three dots on the right and click on that and look at the drone itself, I've got max flight. I got my flight modes. Return to home set at 30 meters, which is about 100 feet, higher than anywhere I'm going to be flying. Max altitude, I've got set at 400 feet, so I won't exceed that. And I don't have max distance set. So everything's done there. Checked all those out. The other thing, we make sure we got GPS lock on it. I've logged into my DJI account, which some of the forums have talked about. And now we're going to try our waypoints. So if I come over here to the symbol for my remote controller and click on that, the options for autonomous flight modes come up. The far right, you'll see waypoints. And I'll click on waypoints. That brings us up to where we are right now. If I expand on that, we see our home point. Now, to get to waypoints, if I took, click these right buttons here, I'm sorry, right three dots. Let me try it again. And look, task library. And then the last task, if I load that, it's going to load all of the waypoints I established in the studio that I talked about. But look at this bizarre thing up here. This big blue circle with a dot in the middle of it that keeps moving around. This has happened every time I've been out here. Don't know if it's got something to do with the drone, something to do with the app. It's certainly not a dog running in a dog park, but it's continually moving around. Now I've checked both the Before You Fly app and the DJI Fly Safe app and there are no issues with this area in here. So we're gonna try something here. I've got everything set up. I'm gonna hit go to start flying my waypoints and I can check my various parameters here for the direction, what to do when it's finished, return to home altitudes, the talked about polyline versus arc. And if you've noticed, you've got to scroll up to find the start button and I can start at any of the, of the waypoints that I choose here. So I choose to start at one. Let's see what happens when I hit start. Click on start. Ah, I get the slider from my drone, right? So I slide across till it turns green. And it takes Take off. off. 
The home point has been now updated. We're hit OK. Please check it on the map. And yes. And I'll be darned. The drone has flown to the first waypoint. Can fall it on the screen there. It's flying now towards the second waypoint. Facing that point of interest. You notice how the drone's pointed toward the point of interest. Now it's going to continue on to the third waypoint. Still don't know what that blue circle's about. We get to the third waypoint, still pointing at the point of interest. On to the fourth waypoint, still pointing at the POI. Doing a good job. No, it's just pointing at the ground, which is okay. That's where I had it set. On to the fifth waypoint. And if you notice, I had it set to stop and hover once it completed the task. So there you go. Now, this was three days trying to figure out what the problem was. And apparently the issue was I had to be logged into my DJI account before it would actually fly this route. We still got this big blue circle. I got no idea what that means. If any of you have seen that, please let me know. But we're done with that. And what are we gonna do from here? Well, let's go ahead and hit return to home. Confirm on that. And what's it gonna do is face go home. home. Going up to my 100 foot return to home altitude. And it's gonna come back. So successful flight, took me three days to get here, but we've got it made. Drone's coming back. Landing. It's gonna land. So let's head back to the studio and figure out what we've done here and what made this work. Be back in a minute. Well, at this point, all I can say is, wow. You know, I've been doing these videos since December of 2020, and this is by far the hardest one I've had to do yet. Taking me the most time, been the most frustrating, and at one point I just almost gave up on it. So how do we get to this point here? Well, initially, when I went to the field, and I've used waypoints before in the past, and it worked okay. But this time when I went to the field, set everything up, I'm sorry, let me back up. This time I set it up in the, in the studio like you saw a, little, a few minutes ago. Took that to the field, upload that to the aircraft and tried to fly and it wouldn't fly. And it gave, gave me this error saying waypoint task parameters invalid. Now what the heck does that mean? Thought, okay, maybe it's got something to do with height or distance or something like that. So I came back, searched the forums, read everything about it. A number of people were having this same problem. And they were saying, check your max altitude, check your max distance, and make sure they don't conflict with what you set up on your waypoints. So I did all that, made sure that was okay, went back to the field, got the same thing again, waypoint task parameters invalid. Still makes no sense. At that point, I was just about ready to give up and tell you guys, just forget about it. This isn't worth the time. It's just too much aggravation. So I found this one little obscure comment on a forum somewhere where this guy was ranting about the problems with this uh, Waypoint 2.0. And I agreed with him, you know, that we don't have any good instructions for it. And he had found out that if he hooks it up to the DJI website, it worked. I thought, well, that's interesting. You know, typically I fly with an iPad mini, Wi-Fi only. So I don't have constant contact to the internet. So I went ahead and tethered it to my phone hooked it up to my DJI account, logged in, and took off and everything went fine. So then I had to kind of rethink what I'm gonna tell you about these two programs. So as long as you can get waypoints to work, it's a pretty good system. You can set it up ahead of time, you can set it up in the field, and you can replicate it every time. Whereas with the Skydio keyframe option, you have to take off from the exact same point every time because that's a visual system versus a GPS system on the, um, on the Mavic 2. 
So I guess the bottom line is it still means that if you're doing construction monitoring, the waypoint function of DJI is probably better. But if you're doing cinematic work, I think the Skydio is probably a better choice. So as always, there's no one best drone for what you're trying to do. Also remember that Waypoints 2.0 only appears on the Mavic 2 series. The Mavic 3, the Air 2S, both have hyperlapse waypoints, and that's a different kind of animal, and I don't think it's applicable here. So this was a tough one. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And if you feel like sharing it with your friends, please do so. That would be greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you so much for watching.